For the following exercises, use each pair of functions to find f of g of 0 and g of f of 0. Okay, so we have two individual questions here. On the left side, we have f functions and g functions, and on the right side, we have f functions and g functions. So we have to just find out what both of these composite functions are for the individual questions. So let's start on the right side. Actually, just kidding. Let's start on the left side. I need to know my left's from right. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's work on these functions first. And let's do f of g of 0. Okay. So we've done tons of work with composite functions already in this playlist. If you guys aren't on the playlist, I suggest you be on it because it will give you tons of questions with composite functions. You guys are going to do great with that. From down here on the tips and tricks, with composite functions, we always work from the inner function to the outer function. So I have a question for you. If it's between the f function here and the g function, which one is the inner function? The one that's most inside the parentheses. So it's got to be the g function, right? In this case, it's g of 0. This whole thing is the inner function, because they're giving you an actual value, and the f function is the outer function. Okay. That's probably the hardest part, because now all we got to do is just plug it in. So here, for the first part, we're going to plug in the input, and it's usually a number, for the inner function and solve. Inner always first. So if I could label this number 1, I'm going to take my inner function, g of 0. And this is the number that I said usually a number down here. That means that you go to the g function, which is this function, and any time that you see an x value, oh, it's right here, I plug in for my number. So let's see. The g of 0 would just be 12 minus, okay, now I have to in plug, plug in my 0, so 0 cubed. And now you just got to do the math. g of 0 equals 12 minus 0 cubed is the same thing as 0 times 0 times 0. You multiply 0 three times. So it's still just 0, right? 12 times 0, or 12 minus 0, is just 12. So g of 0 equals 12. Okay, that's the first part. Now, we're going to use that input, right? The answer that we got, we're going to use it as an input now that we just solved for, and we're going to plug it into the outer function. So now, what was the outer function? Whoops. The outer function was f. But what number? Oh, it's the answer from before. So it's f of 12 equals. So now I go to my f function, and any time that I see an x, okay, one right here, I plug in 12. So let's see. It's going to be the square root of, not x anymore, but 12, and then plus 4. So now all we got to do is just do our algebra. f of 12 is the square root of 12 plus 4 is 16, and we all know that the square root of 16 is 4. It goes in perfectly. So f of 12, and we're getting our final answer, so I'm going to say this is the same thing as saying f of g of 0 is just oops, just 4, because the square root of 16 is 4, and that's your final answer for the first one. Not bad. Okay, let's try to flip it. So now instead of f of g of 0, we're doing g of f of 0. Okay, well now in this case, the f function is the inner function. It's more inside the parentheses. And the g function now is the outer function. So always work from inner to outer. So for the first one now, we're going to be working with the f function first, f of 0. So I go to my f function. Wherever I see an x, I plug in for a 0. So in this case, it would be the square root of 0 plus 4. f of 0 equals the square root of 4. We all know that the square root of 4 is 2. So that's the first part. Now, I'm ready to do my outer function. g of what, though? Oh, g of just 2. Because it's always the answer from the beginning part that you did. That means that when I go over here, and I plug in all my x values for my number, which is now 2. So let's see, I got 12 minus... 
2 cubed. Okay, well, what is 2 cubed really? It tells me how many times I multiply that number. So this is actually, I have to multiply 2 3 times. 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, well, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. So this would just be the same thing as g of 2 equals 12 minus 8. And then just solve. So g of 2, which is the same thing as g of f of 0, because we're getting the final answer. And four, uh, 12 minus 8 is 4. And there you go. Okay, now looky here. This one actually gave us the same answer if we swapped them. But however, I want to say that this normally does not happen. Usually you will get two completely different answers if you swap your inner and outer functions. So this is basically a coincidence. Now let's try this one. f of g of 0. Okay, inner function is the g function. So I will say that here, inner. And then outer function is the f function. So work from inner to outer. So number one, g of 0. We got a new g function. It's over here. In this case, it's 4x plus 3. So anytime you see an x, you will plug in a 0. So this would be 4 times 0 and then plus 3. Maybe just put a little parenthesis here. 4 times 0 plus 3. Not 40. Okay, so now g of 0 is, okay, 4 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is just 3. So now you're moving on to the second part. f of 3. It's always the answer to what you got. And now we're going to use this. Anytime that I see a x, I'm going to plug in a 3. So this would just be 1 over 3, and then finish it out, plus 2. We can simplify this easily, right? f of 3 equals the same thing as f of g of 0, because you're getting the final answer, which equals just 1 over 5. 3 plus 2 is 5, and that is the answer to the first one. Okay, not bad. Let's do the next part. Flipping the composite functions, we're now doing g of f of 0. So now f of 0 is the inner function. And the g function is now the outer function. Okay, so for the first part, you have to do the inner first. f of 0 equals anytime I see a 0, I'm plugging it in. Uh, anytime I see an x, I'm plugging it in, right? Here's an x right here. So I'm going to plug in for a 0. So this would be 1 over 0 and then plus 2. Okay, well, f of 0 then would just be 1 over 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, right? So now I'm ready for the next part. 2, g of 1 half, because it's always the answer to the first part, which means that any time that I see a x value, I'm now plugging it in for a 1 half. So let's see, 4 times 1 half, and then just finish it out, plus 3. Okay. G of 1 half equals 4 times 1 over 2 is the same thing as 4 divided by 2. So that's 2 plus 3. And then if we can plug all this in, simplify G of 1 half, which is the same thing as G of F of 0, is just 2 plus 3, which is 5. And there you go. In this case, we got the reciprocal. Interesting, right? So just know that sometimes you will get different functions, but I guess over here we got exactly the same. So just be careful about that, guys, okay? So as you can see here, math is basically just a puzzle. Math is cool. <laughs> I know, I know. But we'll get there. We'll get there. All right? Just keep studying, guys. I know you guys got this. I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.